Hello everyone and welcome back to my video blog. On my last blog, I have mentioned about uh, the velocity of uh, money and money and real estate and how real estate affect the economy because it represents eighteen percent of the GDP. And uh, this time, I'm going to talk about you know why you know real estate is better than stock again. Okay, so previously I, I already mentioned about you know why because we compare the period of the S and P five hundred. Um, between the period of 2000 and 2009 and pe period of 2010 and 2016 and compare with real estate okay we already have that series talk about and this time I'll talk about you know uh, you know why in real estate is better than stock again okay so you know in stock you do have leverage it's called margin you buy the margin you have options okay so you have you know um, one dollar to control ten dollars so you have ten percent however whenever you have a downdraft on the stock you know they decrease about 10 15 percent that's margin call okay so if you don't meet those margin call you get wiped out versus in real estate in 2008 okay so if you have you know a loan uh, that you know is underwritten properly based on the income of uh, the investor or the income of the home owner most people can keep their home except for you know, those 100% financing people just walk out because the value has dropped 50% or you know 100% uh, for uh, real estate investment yeah of course you know uh, it's called liar loan so um, definitely people walk away okay so um, if that's I'm gonna talk about you know you don't have to sell it if you don't need to okay and then secondly the tax law uh, is just something to uh, to remember the tax law is re uh, the tax code is around six thousand pages okay and out of the six thousand pages only thirty pages that talk about the tax rate how much tax you have to pay the rest is pretty much talk about tax incentives you know the write off everything like that so. Um, actually, you should use the tax uh, law to your advantage. So, what real estate has that uh, stock uh, don't is depreciation. Also, okay, the so depreciation um, you can depreciate on a residential uh, property one to four or apartment. Okay, over twenty seven and a half years. Okay, so pretty much uh, three point six four percent each year. So you know that you know uh, you can not depreciate the total. You depreciate roughly eighty percent of the value of the uh, real estate that you purchase. Okay, twenty percent still on the land. If it's a condo, yeah, you can go to ninety five percent because you know the land is has no value on a condo. You know, it's mostly on the building. Okay, so you can depreciate eighty percent of the value of the real estate that you purchase over. 27 and a half years, which is each year you can depreciate 3.64%. While your property, as I mentioned, over the last 35 years, we've, we average out about 6 point something, I just say 6%. So while the value increased by about 6%, you depreciate down by uh, 3.64. So that's a factor that you know, help you to have deduction. You can write off. So less tax payment from your income. So for example, you have uh, a $10,000 net income uh, uh, for that investment property. And that investment property you purchase for 500000 And we say that $400,000 represent the building and depreciate over 27 and a half years. And that, you know, is what? You know, you can depreciate roughly $12,000. So $10,000 is tax-free. And actually, you have some more write-off for some other stuff. Okay, so um, that's the beauty of using you know the tax law to help you amplify your cash uh, return. So I hope that this is something interesting for you. You understand why you know real estate is superior to stock, and why you can uh, create wealth uh, through real estate, and why you know you do not need to save uh, to uh, to toward your retirement. By, through real estate, okay, because it's a velocity of money. So if you earn something, you can buy some more real, real estate to earn you more money and get those uh, tax advantage. So uh, until next time, I hope that you send me some more comments, some feedback, so I can give you more of this uh, subject matters. And uh, text me, call me, email me, okay, and then uh, 
if you have subscribed to this channel, put a comment. I'm more than happy to you know, respond back to you. Of course, you know, any text and email will be faster for me to respond to your feedback. And until next time, stay safe, stay happy. Thank you.